have with me the CT Food and Farm Photographer, Winter Kaplitson. Thank you so much for being I'm so here. So pleased to be here. All right, so my grandfather was a dairy farmer. Mm. So when I came across what you do for a living, mm -hmm. I was, you had me at farm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you just did. Yeah. Did you grow up on a farm? Where uh, are you from? My, I, I grew up in Coventry, but uh, my great uncle was a dairy farmer, uh, and everyone in the family knew that his dairy farm in Pennsylvania was home. Uh. So you would go home for haying. You know, you would. You knew it was home, and so farming was a, a big part of my grandfather's life and, and our life by extension. There used to be so many farms in the state of Connecticut, yeah. if we go back hundreds of years, and they've dwindled, but now it's coming back. People yes. want to grow their own food, yes. which is awesome. As a uh, photographer, you started out with the uh, Coventry Regional Farmers Market. You grew right. that. Yes. Yes. Out of that came a blog. So Tell me how um, this, this went because you're doing a lot of stuff. Yeah, part of my role as one of the founders of that market was marketing, and we used photography so intensely to tell the story of that market to connect it to people who were interested in local food, and the market became so successful. Um, the board would say to me, like, "Can you stop marketing? Like, too many people are coming." Like, and I'm like, "No." <laughs> so what so we see was, was, I the mean, market? that market would draw over five thousand people in three wow. hours on a Sunday to qu quiet country roads that could hardly handle the traffic so so those board members were not exactly incorrect so what we what we started to do was use photography then to um, tell our uh, local food fans about what restaurants were serving the food grown by our farmers or to um, follow those farmers home and photograph them harvesting or milking and talk about where else those products were sold to again try to connect people who were in interested in these local foods with um, you know where to find them and how to support this movement. So your marketing was telling a story yes. and pictures were telling a story. Hugely, yes. What kind of camera did you pick up? Oh my team? goodness. And I wasn't the only photographer by any means. We had a number of amazing photographers, but you know, this is early uh, digital cam early, early, early. <laughs> you know, so pre iPhone. Yeah, yeah, pr um, pre Facebook. You know, so we kind of grew with social media and learned how to use and this is the this is the age of the power of the image so we grew with that and that original board that that founded and, and grew that market um, our final year it was named America's most celebrated farmers market um, but that group was aging and we kind of aged out as a group from running the market and it's run by a different group now but um, the board said to me what's our next project because we were a 501c3 nonprofit to support local food and, and education about healthy eating so um, I had a photography blog at the time that was just my own photography about food and I said well the grown-up version of a blog is a magazine what if we push to be a magazine and so um, the nonprofit side continued um, as a as a magazine called Connecticut Food and Farm and my own commercial photography uh, career grew alongside it also photographing food and farms um, working with marketers to shoot campaigns around tourism and handcraft and basically anything that you would have bought at a farmers market or be connected to at a, at a really good farmers market is what I photograph now who calls you up and says winner I ha I need you in here now you know because what? you tell a story with with your photography um, a lot of times it's the little guys I love so, that. and I do too um, that's who I connect with I'm a very very modest grassroots kind of person um, and we're talking about you know a raw milk dairy or um, you know a somebody cheese shop? A cheese, somebody and they may not be connected with a marketer or, or ever have used professional photographer before but they know me they know me from the farmers markets they know me from you know agriculture conferences um, they see me around I'm you know if you follow me on social media at all I'm shooting probably five days a week wow. so that's that's five days a week that I'm out and just meeting people. And so which is weddings the most are powerful. not for you, unless there's no. food there. Then no. you're taking uh, pictures. I just I just photographed Tyler Anderson's wedding uh -huh. with uh, Melanie, uh, and but I shot the photographs for the media. 
So I wasn't there to shoot the, you know, the beautiful wedding portrait. I was there to shoot the food and the, you know, the decorations and all those sorts of things. And those were um, sent to the media the next day. So that's the kind of stuff I might shoot a wedding from the caterer's perspective. I love this. I so you too. found a niche because <laughs> yes. of the farmer's market. Yeah, it's my passion. You know, I, I fully recognize and understand that there are um, many aspects of photography that would be far more profitable, but my heart wouldn't be there. This is really where my heart is. And, um, you know, it's why if something falls through on a day, uh, you know, and I look at my schedule and I think, it's going to be golden hour tonight. It's going to be beautiful. <laughs> you know, I'll quickly put out a post. Who wants a pro bono shoot? You know, just tell oh. me where not to go. Because again, I'm known. You can let me loose in your kitchen. You can let me loose on your farm. I know how to how to handle myself. And you're a 4-H kid. I was a 4-H kid. And what did, you, did you have animals? Did you I was horse 4-H kid okay. and, and also right like home economics. So you, I was in, in a number of them and it was it was wonderful then and it's still wonderful yeah. now and I'm connected to a lot of those families and a lot of those kids because I photograph at many of the fairs. So I really get to see them in action. and Especially this time of year, too. So great. All right, Love let's it. look at some of your pictures. Oh, great. Your I'm photographs. so excited. <laughs> All right, tell me what, and, and I love the lighting. Yeah. What is this? Is this at a fair? So, no, this is my friend Carrie at Iris Creek Farm. And this was actually a, a rare, like, little slow period that I had. And I said, let's do a photo project. And the photo project was last snow to bud break because people in bud break so leaf trees oh, okay. and bushes start All to right. leaf out uh -huh. so uh, I think people in Connecticut know about maple sugaring season sure. and then they know about asparagus followed quickly by strawberries they have no sense of really what happens in between so I put We're it out in our homes yeah exactly <laughs> waiting for the weather to get a little yeah. bit better so I, I put out a you know I'll photograph anything that you guys are doing on your farms you know from now as many shoots as I can fit in so um, you know, this is my friend Carrie. She's a fiber artist, and she has these amazing animals. And this is just her interacting with this, you know, favorite of hers, and uh, would be shorn soon, and so on. And it's just wonderful. But I, I photographed um, people pruning at orchards, you know, and all, all kinds of places. Some of the orchards were wholesale. That is a place that the average consumer would never be because they're not at farmers markets wow. and they're uh, not PYO farms. So this was a wonderful project and just fabulous. What kind of camera are you using now? So I currently use a Nikon D5, which is, uh, wedding photographers have a, usually mm -hmm. their files are a little bit larger, but this would be the kind of camera a sports photographer would use because it's good at capturing action and it's good in low light. See what and you've learned. I know, right? By just <laughs> so doing it exactly. Yourself. So right. in this case, it's an overcast day. She's in the uh, doorway of the barn, and um, the beautiful. lighting's just amazing. But her interacting with her animals is the best part. Speaking of animals, yeah, this has to be a fair. Is this a four? So this is the Brooklyn Fair. Okay. This is um, one of my. I just I absolutely love the Brooklyn Fair. It's the oldest, uh, longest-running fair in America, um, and their commitment to 4-H and um, the kids and the and the livestock is significant. It's grown rather than diminished over the years. So here's an example. Again, what have I learned as a photographer? This is gorgeous golden hour. This is moments before the sun would set. Went into the cattle barn. First girl I saw, do you have a cow in this barn? Yes, I do. Do you want a portrait? Yes, I do. Meet me out front. And that's, that's all it takes. So I bring her to the light. And here she is just interacting with her, her blue ribbon. So you're ribbon. working quickly these days because you know, you know what you want. You know what? I you think know, you need to work quickly for, t for two reasons. Number one, because the light's going to change. Like in this case, literally minutes later, the light is gone. But for example, with chefs, they don't have a moment to hold for you. No. You know, and even if somebody is working and they look up and give you eye contact and maybe you even say, quick smile, um, smiles deflate like souffles. You know, you have just that literally one or two shutter clicks to get it right. Um, where the expression is natural, the interaction is natural. Have you done any shoots outside of Connecticut? I mean, how sought after are you becoming? A little bit, but um, for the most part, my name precedes me. Connecticut Food and Farm is what it says. My focus is Connecticut. And even uh, within restaurants, I tend to um, get hired by farm-to-table restaurants, somebody, uh -huh. somebody sourcing local, certainly scratch cooking, because that's, that's the stuff I'm all about. That's who you're all about. Yeah, all right, let's continue yeah. on with our photographs. <laughs> Here's another fair, I am assuming. Yes, yeah, so this is the Haddam Neck Fair. I shot for them the first time this year. Um, this is the pony poles. So as they explained to me, ponies are smaller than horses. 
Well, there they are. <laughs> but they're pulling weight, just like you would expect in the horse pulls. But this picture is all about that light. It had been a cloudy day, and there was just this one beam of golden light coming down. And I just kept scooting, scooting, you know, because that light's changing and moving. But I wanted this. I wanted that dust lit up. Do you like shooting when people don't know you're around? You know, uh, yes and no, maybe. Yes and no, but also uh, I was an I was an elementary and middle school teacher for over 20 years, and teachers have the ability to be with you, uh -huh. and you forget they're there. They're just so com you're so comfortable with them. That's and, the best way to be. Yeah, and that's that's often what um, you know people I'm shooting say. I knew she was here, then I forgot she was here. That's, you know, that's the best. That's the son of a professional. Yeah. Love the color here. Yes. So uh, this is a, again a small a specialty food maker in Connecticut. It's called Soul Tea, and this is work that I want to begin to do more of. But they just mail it to me, and I do product photography. But I want this product photography to be on par with what they'd get out of you know a design house in New York City or somewhere else. Seems so, like it already is. It's gorgeous, right? Uh, but I also have I'm kind of a you know. Props hound, so that's a real vintage, uh, you know, vintage sil silver plate and. And you came and up with that. Yes, and there's nothing better than quiet in your studio with all of your props and the product, for you to just. How am I going to showcase this? I love that. And where is Soul Tea? I, they're down south, Southbury, downstate somewhere. Okay, yeah. downstate. Yeah. Love it. So I shoot a lot of cheese. <laughs> Who doesn't love uh, cheese? Ex exactly. <laughs> There's nothing about it that I don't love. So this is an example of a collaboration that's a little more sophisticated. This is a cheesemonger box, which is Fairfield Cheese Company, Greenwich Cheese Company, um, and they have a subscription uh, cheese program called Cheesemonger Box. And so this, writing that down. it's amazing. I get to every, t you know, people always ask, do you get to eat the food? Of course. Of course. So after we shoot, we eat every month. So they have a different, uh, different box every month, and um, this is in collaboration with Box Eight Creative here in New Haven. Ah. So they're their marketer, and they do the food styling. So I bring boxes and bags of props, and we all just style together and, and shoot. And some of these, there's just amazing. Food styling sounds like it would be a fun job. It's hard. It's very hard. Um, you know, I've gotten much better at it, but it is really complex because it's not just how it looks, it's how it looks through the lens. Sure. And it's not just how it looks to your eye, it's how the camera is going to interpret the light. And there's a perfect example. So this is, an, this is another collaboration. This is with Miranda Creative, a uh, brand agency out of Norwich. Sure. And in this case, uh, we were launching a beef company. And I'm working with uh, Jonathan Hudak, chef of Cafe Mantic in Willimantic. So he's doing the plating according to my instructions. Um, but again, that lighting is, is everything right there. And it looks so good, you can almost taste it. Right. <laughs> Which That's is the dinner hour. So yeah, oh my yeah, absolutely. That is terrific. All right, here comes the chefs. Yeah. Love, I love shooting chefs. Um, so this is this is Adam he's at Sift, Mystic. and he is yeah. a, he's famous guy, right? I, yeah. Right. <laughs> this is a really famous guy. Um, I love to do a portrait I, when I'm shooting, and I was just shooting cakes and, and things in the restaurant. It was a, you know a hired shoot to um, just to shoot their their inventory of cakes for, for their um, catering program. And I said we can't leave here without a portrait because I love portraits. And this was literally you know three clicks. And he just hoisted up one of the cakes, and but that's I it. love the idea of portraits of chefs. Yeah, yeah. I love. It. Well, and I there say to them, I say that. to them, we are not doing uh, chef co arms crossed. Right. We're not doing that. Right. We're doing something fun. It's very good. Uh, this I loved. This um, this was just the most special moment, and this um, resonated with almost everyone in the food industry because uh, hours are so long for restaurant tours. So this, of course, is Chef Tyler Anderson. We're at Millwright's, uh, and at that point, his fiance and his daughter, you know, had stopped by because that's where you're going to see your person in a restaurant is to come to the restaurant. And he was just walking around the kitchen, you know, as a chef would, checking everything and making sure everything was working right, and talking to his daughter. And uh, pretty much every chef that saw this was said, "This is real. This yeah. is real." Long hours. Yeah. Long, long hours. Love this. Yes. I, uh, when I posted this picture, I said I just spent the day with a bread goddess. <laughs> right. So this is Kathleen of Flourishing Artisan. And this is a subscription food business. She is in Granby. Um, but this was a piece that we followed up for the 
uh, Connecticut Food and Farm Magazine, the, the nonprofit side of what I do, and really looked at the rise of subscription food businesses in Connecticut. So, Cheesemonger Box would be an example sure. of that. But you know, these are not things. Her breads are not available at any market or any store to get her bread you've got to place an order with her oh, and pick up and her breads are absolutely amazing well, she's sourdough honest. she's she totally is every bread is beautiful and she's beautiful yes she is <laughs> All right, this, this is in Chester. So this is in Chester. This is Grano Arso, uh, one of my Love top it. half dozen restaurants in the whole state. Um, Chef Joel Gargano. Um, and so they are, they are plating here at a wine dinner. You know, and if there's ever a moment of such intensity, it's plating when you're serving a large group because everything's got to go out together. So. It's all hands on deck. If you're a server, you're plating. If you're the wine pourer, you're plating. Everyone's plating. So um, this is an example, too, where I'm down super low <laughs> to get that angle. And just, I'm in the way. And whatever. It really is a symphony, because it's, it's all got to come together. It's amazing to get that steam and the, and the heat lights. And then this, this is the last one. Where is this? So this is at Inishmore. Um, this is Alex, the owner, with the entire kitchen staff. And this is, you're going to love this. This is the day before St. Patrick's Day. So oh this gosh. is like high holiday this is Christmas Eve sure and what I say to people is I want to shoot what is Christmas Eve for you the most exciting moment of your year and these guys were they're they've been cooking at this point for over 24 hours you know tons and tons of corned beef and cabbage and everything that's gonna go with the meal and they're just dirty and tired and the restaurants closed but they're decorated and I said I just want you guys to step out Alex you know cook 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 Give, give me some attitude, and that's what we did. So, Winter, are you winning awards for your photography yet? Or no. Or do you not even submit? No, so do, I do not even submit, um, and I say this with all due respect, I'm not interested in pleasing photographers. I understand. I would that. be judged by photographers. Yeah. I'm interested in pleasing the people that I shoot. Um, you know, the, if, if I share pictures or they share pictures, I'm, I'm so proud of you. You know, that's proud of the person pictured. Like, that's the mark of success. Or when you become the person's Facebook profile picture for the next two years, you know, right, exactly. that they're happy with the picture and that you've held up. A little bit of a gilded mirror to what they do. It's accurate that that anybody who sees the picture would recognize what's pictured if they go there. But it's just the most beautiful version of it. You're the real deal. Thank you. I want to ask you. <laughs> so you. on your website, yeah, you're as comfortable in a hot kitchen as you are ankle deep in mud in a pasture. Uh, yes. Does that pretty much describe you? It really does. I'm I'm very very com down in the dirt. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> um, but do you also, grow your own food? I do. I have a big garden, and but I shop farmers markets and you know all sorts of things. I just uh, that's my true element. I'm really comfortable in those places. Not everybody is, and not everybody um, is able to conduct themselves in those environments that are you know you've got to close a gate behind you at a farm, and you've got to stay out of the way of the chef, or maybe you can lean in for one shot and then back out. You know you ha just have to understand how these these environments work. They're not for everyone. Is this your full time job? It is, yes. So yes. you left teaching? Uh, yes, I left teaching. Um, I had a, an herbal soap business for a little while, but then photography really took over uh -huh. and sold that business and just went for it. And so, I'm, I'm shooting, you know, uh, probably 300 days a year. Wow. T tons. I wow. shoot a lot. All right, so these are, these are the magazines. And can you, right. can you subscribe to these? So yes, you can. So Connecticut, Connecticut, Connecticut Food, and Food and Farm Magazine. So this is the nonprofit part of what we do. I mean, I think it's absolutely beautiful and on par with... Uh, with anything that you could purchase, actually, it's ad-free, so it's it's better. That's amazing That's, to me, right? What is the cost for four of these for the year? So there is there, because it's an it is an online magazine, so there is no charge to subscribe. It is delivered directly to your inbox. Uh, you can read the magazine in its entirety, or you can click on a single article. You can download. You can share articles. So and this these is are, free. This is free, and these are all. Every photographer is working pro bono. Every writer is working pro bono. So we are we are not sharing a story because we're assigned to it. We're sharing a story because it's relevant to what's happening in the food and farm world in Connecticut, and it's our passion. Look what you're doing for the state of Connecticut. I hope so. I hope it's having an I... effect because we're so proud of Connecticut. Everything that's happening here. Um, you know, to read a magazine like this it is the equivalent of visiting a great farmer's market. You'll feel better afterward. You'll feel proud of Connecticut and the things that uh, our neighbors are doing here. How many issues have you printed? We're into, I believe the one that we're going to publish is 15. 
That's amazing. So yeah. you've been at it three, four years? Yeah, yeah, Something yeah, like that. Yeah. So you can look at it on, where's, where's so the website? So you can go from ctfoodandfarm.com, which is my website. There's a magazine tab, okay. and you can go right there, and it's also its own page on Facebook as well. And you can then... Get a hard copy, and how do you do that? So you can order a hard copy. It's rather expensive, but right. it is not. It is. Um, we're not limited by page number or color. So we say to our graphic artists, like, M more images, more, <laughs> more, more, more. So it's you know it's not unusual for um, it to cost thirty-five to fifty dollars. It's very expensive. But sure. if you're in it, you want a copy. Right. You know if your content is it's in it or you're tool. totally. Um, but it's also you know because we're. We see ourselves as marketing partners with these producers in Connecticut. If we have just profiled you and your juicing business or, um, you know, Connecticut oyster farmers and so on, you can have this beautifully designed PDF that you can link to in your website. So it's, it's for you. We're making content to, to share with everybody interested in local food. It's but just amazing. It's good stuff. <laughs> um, the sky's the limit for everybody. Is there mm. something else you're going to do? I mean, you're really... You know, busy um, I'm super busy. For me, the real magic is behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So when I get to be places with chefs, um, with you know, whomever that not everybody gets to be. Uh, there was an event last spring at Stone Acres Farm in Stonington, and um, I got a call and they said, you know, we're doing this benefit dinner. The brigade people in New London are doing this benefit dinner, and would you photograph? And I said. Hold up. Are the chefs donating their time? Yes, the chefs are. Then I'll donate my time as well. Where did you come from? And there are not people Because like we're you. in this together, right? <laughs> uh, so, you know, I said yes. And then uh, a little bit later, they sent me the, here's the list of chefs. The list of chefs was Jacques Papin, Rene Redzepi. These were literally the best chefs in the world. Tickets were never wow. available to the public. They were all just sold by invite to, for this very successful fundraiser. But here I am, fly on the wall with these most amazing chefs in the world. And so, having joy. Loving it. And the images were just beautiful. And they were all using everything local and from that farm. So, you know. That's great. <laughs> Winter, thank you for helping fairs and farms and chefs and whatever else you're shooting, jewelry and handcrafts yeah. for the state of Connecticut. I appreciate you coming on and thanks for your work. Thank you so much for giving me the chance to talk about it. I appreciate okay. it, Anne. Spend all night kissing and it falls right here Then who else is missing? Got a little sidetrack to find my solution I call the keys to the door But it's also a metaphor Need to keep going to the grocery store But mine, just the same time I'll skip right ahead to the nice ride